Hey everybody, Pinstripe here. What is going on? I've got some gameplay here for you on Frostfight. I'm still suffering from this cold, by the way, so this video may be even more nasally than the last commentary. Um, but Frostfight, everyone's favourite, and I'm going to be talking today about what the best sort of lineup is, in my opinion, when playing this map in competitive. At the end of the day, my word is not God, and if you have a preference for other classes, then by all means use them. If you're a scout main, go for the scouts. If you're a heavy main, go for the heavies. Although, speaking as a heavy main, I don't actually use any heavies in my lineup because my focus when I play on this map is to start with two paratroopers, a grenadier, a medic, and a sapper. Uh, and of course, the main reason for the heavy paratrooper lineup is because of the guided missile race. So normally, if you have two players that are playing against each other and they're pretty familiar with the crates on this map because there are just tons of them, the most valuable and I guess expensive of them are that of the guided missiles. There are six to be used in total, so you'll find two crates that have times three usage of them, and alongside those you'll also find rocket launchers, uh, jetpacks, cluster bombs, uh, high explosive grenades if I'm not incorrect or wrong or something like that, but either way there is a ton of stuff to use here, but guided missiles being able to deal that full 75 damage and as well being high up here on the mountain and being able to see everyone below you. You see I started my first turn by dealing that damage onto the enemy grenadier and then uh, dealing the same damage here to remove him in those first two turns. The AI in this gameplay are just dumb as hell, especially the paratroopers as you'll see going through, but if you're playing against a regular human during this time then, like I was saying a minute ago about the uh, guided missile race, uh, it is going to be whoever takes their turn first will be the first one to collect the guided missiles. I mean, you can be greedy and use your first turn to collect both of them. It is possible, but you have to be really quick. And most of the time it will mean that you won't be able to actually uh, shoot or deal any damage within that first turn because you'll spend all of that time going for the crates. Uh, jetpacks, of course, are pretty slow, and as I started this round, I did get very lucky with my spawn positions uh, being directly below where the guided missiles are, and uh, that's also another key point to remember uh, on maps like this, and maps like Chill Hill as well, where there are plenty of crates, having that prior knowledge of what is in those crates is going to be really helpful. But the double paratrooper lineup on turn 1 and 2 is basically there to ensure that I am gifted at least one of the guided missile crates. If my opponent is not packing any paratroopers within their first two turns, then I am basically guaranteed them. Uh, but also if they decide to go with, say, an orderly on turn one and tranquilize one of my paratroopers, then at least I still have the other one there again to gain the upper hand with the high ground and to get one of the uh, guided missile crates. Uh, granted, those aren't the most important because at the end of the day, if you're coordinated with the rest of your squad uh, alongside your paratroopers, you can just dominate completely on this map. You can see I stuck with the standard meta of the Grenadier and Medic, but what if this was in a best of three match where Frostfight was, uh, say, round two or three, where I didn't have any medic or grenadier to rely on. What would I do then? Well, that's maybe where I would turn to the likes of the scout or heavy weapons, or if I had any sappers left over, I would definitely chuck them in there as well because sappers are gonna be huge on this map. For me, I don't usually go with heavies because of the water problem. Given that it uh, encompasses a big portion of the map, uh, it makes your shots more likely to be missed and to fall into the drink if you aren't like 90% accurate most of the time, especially if the enemy are positioned around the center. I mean, yes, it's great to knock enemies off certain high grounds and into the water with the likes of the mortar and bazooka, but I feel like it's, uh, I don't know, that one's kind of left up for debate for those uh, heavy mains that think that their aim is accurate enough. I mean, you can uh, sort of hide yourself within the hills as well as heavies. You don't need to get up close. That's uh, obviously a big benefit of being a heavy weapons guy, but then at the same time positioning yourself up in the hills makes you more of a viable target for the likes of the sappers because TNTs are going to do big bits of damage up there, not just from the damage numbers, but uh, also because you are very much likely to be knocked off the map with uh, more experienced players aiming for the outer bounds areas. And trust me when I say that Frostbite is just full of them. I mean, at the end of the day, this is a snowy map, so things are going to be incredibly slippery 
Uh, and yeah, just something you have to watch out for all the time and make sure that your footing is taken care of because there are many areas where you can easily slip down and lose time. Don't forget that we have only 30 seconds. Uh, but in terms of this gameplay, I have things locked down completely and uh, we'll be finishing this match with all of my team intact. Spoilers, I know, but like I said, the AI are just brain dead uh, and they end up doing things that normal players would not do, taking choices that they would not take. For instance, on the second turn, the paratrooper turned to my grenadier and shot him with a machine gun. You know, you've got mobility, you've got things to do, but the AI is just not clever enough to really challenge you, or at least a lot of the more experienced veteran players, uh, which is why this is quite frustrating a lot of the time, because, you know, I want to record Hog's gameplay for you that's entertaining, uh, and it's great to wipe the floor with the AI, considering how much they can dominate in the single-player campaign, but uh, Dusky is an absolute mad lad, because, I mean, look at this shot. This is the perfect example of how to angle up a shot and just plonk the shell down onto my pig's head. It's not going to matter anyway, because I'm now going to deal a, uh, well, first a tranquilizer to gain that extra turn, and then after that, a, uh, a wonderful no-scope rocket launcher shot, which is always so, uh, it just, it feels so good. Collecting the crate, turning, and just knowing, all right, I don't even need to angle it. We're just going to shoot it straight and get the full 50 for him to then perish as well, even better. Interestingly enough, and I think I've mentioned this before, Frostfight is actually one of the oldest maps in all of Hogs of War, so its design stands the test of time, as it were, but it's also one that uh, requires good mobility. So my advice to you for playing on this map, if you're playing it casually or competitively, is have at least one paratrooper. If you disagree with me, if you think that there are other better strategies uh, for this map, then do let me know in the comments, because at the end of the day, like I said, there are jetpacks elsewhere on the map so there are plenty of other viable strategies in order to get around but as you can see here i ace this jetpack maneuver because i'm thinking well you know i'm gonna just use this final jetpack of mine to uh hit this guy for 20 damage kill him and then hit the other guy and finish this round no instead he bumps himself into the water and the damage onto myself causes my turn to end because if you are interrupted while jetpacking in terms of taking damage that is just how the game works. Your turn will end. But Wolfie's going to take some machine guns to the face. And he's actually going to slide all the way down into the water of all places. And, and down to 21 health. What is that about? Just pigs, get out of the water quickly. Please. I insist. Uh, but finishing things off with, as we started, a guided missile. Let me know your thoughts on everything in the comments as to what we have talked about today in this video. Again, apologies if I'm all nasally. Um, I'm almost out of this cold whatever this thing is uh, but I still need to take some drugs so I'm gonna go do that and I will catch you guys later for the next one. Oh, and don't do drugs kids D do good drugs I'm